Um, so we have uh, Dr. Constance Walker uh, with us again. Um, and this talk she's going to give us about the Dark Skies Awareness Pro Program for the International Year of Astronomy. So as I'm sure you all at this stage know, the 2009 has been the International Year of Astronomy. Um, I think the light pollution community in general, the Dark Sky Association, we tend not to mention astronomy quite so much or about light pollution this, uh, in the current times. As you've seen in the talks, there are so many other aspects to light pollution, so many other people and wildlife is, are affected that um, you almost don't need to mention astronomy. However, it's IYA and uh, we're going to mention astronomy. So, uh, Connie, I'll, I'll hand it over to you. Well, thank you, Albert, and hello, everybody, again, and thank you for being here. Um, we've had a number of, of uh, programs as a result of the efforts under the Dark Skies Awareness um, Cornerstone uh, for the International Year of Astronomy, and I wanted to talk a little bit about people's involvement, how you might still become involved in the future, uh, some outcomes, and uh, its sustainability. And, um, and so IWA has acted as a very nice catalyst, a wonderful catalyst to get uh, even the smallest of children looking up at the stars at least once during this past year in a variety of ways. And what Dark Skies Awareness really truly wants to do is getting them looking up at a dark night sky. And if they're not looking up at a dark night, night sky, to, to uh, bring the awareness to them they should be and how they could be. And so what we typically do when we uh, talk to children and, and to adults about this, we actually try to um, convey to them the kind of impact that light pollution has had in the last 50 years. And this is uh, one, uh, I'm pleased to say, one image that has not been shown during this meeting just yet. And this is of the United States, although I'm not so pleased to say the effect that light pollution has had on the United States. As the population has grown in the last 50 years or so, so has the light pollution levels, especially in the eastern half of the United States, as you can see. And the last uh, panel down on the lower right is the projection that Sanzano and all have done um, uh, to, get the level, to, to predict the levels of light pollution, say, 16 years from now, when um, my own children will be having children. And, uh, and so the question is often asked, is this the kind of legacy that you want to leave your children? And what is it you can do now on a local level that, uh, to help prevent this from getting worse? And so that was the goal of, of the uh, International um, Dark Skies Awareness uh, wor working groups. And this is the task group, actually. There's, uh, this is only two-thirds of them. I'll show you the other two-thirds. And ten people from that task group are here at this meeting. I am very, very proud to say. So you have Gunther, who just uh, was up here at the podium, and Friedel Pass, and we also have Andreas Hainel and uh, Kolat Zoltan and Robert Hill, Albert White, and uh, also here is uh, Dan Hillier, Stephen Owens, and Kim Patton, and uh, of course me. And then uh, well, who is not here, who is but here in spirit, is Darren Baskell, so, and others you may know there. We have similarly uh, a much smaller group of, for the U.S. working group, because I'm also in charge of the national working group for the U.S. Um, and then, to put this very simply, what we try to do, uh, we brainstorm for a while, uh, the, the, particularly the, the working group, when I, I started off with just the national working group, and we brainstormed of what types of activities might best fit the needs of all different types of people. And so we, we thought, well, hmm, there's this young group who's very savvy in terms of new technology. So uh, we do have a presence on Second Life, for instance. And then we also uh, dabbled into educational materials, and that's an area that's definitely going to be sustained, as we're hoping the new te technologies area is going to be sustained, um, because that the educational materials, that just keeps on growing. So we have uh, everything from the kit and the, and the light shielding demo that you saw. And in the arts, we also um, have a photo contest. That's, all, that's just about the only thing we have in the arts, but we tried. And the, the photo contest is going on actually right now, and I'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, we have specific events, uh, a couple of them that were international and a couple of them that uh, can be done on a national level. And then, of course, the citizen science programs, and you've all heard a little bit about that. And uh, then we've tried to support as much as we could the dark skies communities, and I'll talk a little bit about those as well. So those are about the six different areas which, which we tried to address uh, before the international year uh, actually started. So we've been working as a group for at least a year and a half, if not almost two years. Okay, so for in terms of new technology, um, there are, I'm proud to say there's nearly 10 podcasts for this year, one each month 
addressing different types of light pollution issues. So you have, for instance, at least two from the International Dark Skies Association um, addressing, um, I believe one is on outdoor lighting. And what's the second one on, Kim? Is she here? Three. There you go. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Okay. And, um, and, and then we've had stuff on Globe at Night and Dark Skies Awareness and another program called Let There Be Night, which you saw the outcome as the map with 3,400 uh, 3, um, uh, measurements for Globe at Night. Uh, the, the man responsible for that has his own podcast. For Second Life, um, Second Life is really amazing. Um, again, the same man that did the 3,400 data points also made a hollow dome that has in it, you can walk down this lane and turn off and on lights. Some of those lights are compliant and some of those are not. And you can see the effects of those lights. And it's a really, and he got, he was one of the, the 10 finalists for the Linden Prize. And this is a very prestigious prize uh, for Second Life, uh, innovative programs in Second Life. And so it's a very worthwhile thing. And then the second thing on Second Life is still being developed, but it's almost there. It's a, an attempt to go through four different kinds of zones, everywhere from a suburban area down to, um, down to a very dark skies area. And on the way, you have all these different panels that you can uh, learn about uh, light pollution along the way, from, from wildlife to astronomy to uh, uh, energy and safety. So it's, it's, a, and it's material borrowed from the International Dark Skies Association. Uh, we also have a, the youngest member of our group who's actually a senior in high school, believe it or not. He's a, um, an ardent uh, dark skies advocate from a wee little age uh, with SQMs and whatnot. He is responsible for the MySpace and the Facebook pages, which I'm, I'm hoping more people will take advantage of. Uh, I talked to Gunther about that today, for instance. So um, now, in terms of educational materials, um, we have the Great Switch Out, which is um, pretty much a pseudonym for a wonderful effort that the Dark Skies, the International Dark Skies Association has done to produce a practical guide on the homeowner's um, uh, guide to quality lighting, outdoor lighting, and, uh, and it's downloadable as well. They've also produced, IDA has also produced posters, brochures, and displays uh, that people can download. The display, although, is a traveling display, and you have to request that to be sent to you. But their, their brochures and posters are wonderful, and they have effects of light pollution uh, and they're, um, on health, wildlife, energy, astronomy, safety, and glare control. And uh, my hat's off to them. They're, they're an ardent par partner in our, in our, on our working group. Um, we also have uh, a planetarium program for small and portable domes to advocate dark skies awareness um, in terms of getting prepared actually for globe at night. So it starts out with a Lakota Indian story, which you can replace with any folklore story. And then it, it um, actually does a light shielding demo interactively with the people in the audience. And it goes into um, dark skies issues and globe at night. We also have a two DVD set that comes as part of the kit, as does the planetarium show, uh, that I've let Leo borrow, actually. And the two DVD set has on it an, an incredible number of videos and uh, PowerPoints and images and songs uh, that all have to do with light pollution and uh, the prevention of light pollution. And uh, these are also things that you can get from us um, uh, if you'd like them. And of course, I've already talked about the light shielding demo and, and showed you it, and that's part of the centerpiece of our kit. In the arts program, we have this wonderful earth and sky photo contest. Now, if you'll notice, I'm not the one responsible for doing all these things. We just, I just kind of ask people to do these things. Believe it or not, we don't have a budget. We weren't given a budget from IYA. People have done this out of the goodness of their hearts, and it really strengthens my belief in people to see how much has been done during the International Year of Astronomy, especially because I'm so familiar with Dark Skies Awareness, how much has been done in that particular cornerstone. And uh, this is another example from the world at night. This is a group of professional photographers led by Babak Tafreshi from Iran. And he is the one that actually helped spearhead this with Richard Wainscote, who's the, um, who was the president of Commission 50 for the IAU. And they've come up with this contest, which is online, and you can get more information at uh, the World at Night website on it and how you can participate. It has a dark skies theme. Now, the events that we did this year, we supported ardently 
Earth Hour, which is this wave of darkness that happens uh, at the end of March, last Saturday of March, every year. This year, 4,100 cities participated. Close to a billion people were estimated to be involved. And uh, this included about 87 different countries. And there's truly a wave of darkness in places like Hong Kong and Beijing, all these cities that you would not imagine that would turn off their lights, did so on major buildings around town. The World at Night, uh, we are an ardent supporter of the World at Night in Defense of Starlight, which is a night and celebration every year on April 20th. It's, it was a created from the Starlight Initiative, which you've heard something about today. Uh, it was made the, to be the first night of the International Dark Skies Week that we're now having. It used to be national in the U.S., but now it's gone international as of, uh, because of the International Year of Astronomy, and it will remain so. And so you can celebrate that usually sometime in April. And uh, a young lady who's a... a um, she won an award from IDEA many years ago when she was in high school and she's now in college. She's in charge of that. Uh, the Dark Skies Discovery Sites, uh, about the same time Dan was creating his Dark Skies Discovery Sites, uh, we were creating our own and we just happened to name it the same thing and it has pretty much the similar goals. So he pretty much has the first Dark Skies Sites. We have two in the United States that pretty much happened the same time in about eight, uh, March of this past year. Um, I think. I can't quite remember the dates. But they are typically in rural locations, um, somebody's backyard observatory or community park or school where you can try to get the public out into s somewhat dark skies, maybe as, as good as 4.8 uh, magnitudes, and try to um, get them uh, learning about the importance of dark skies. And this is led by the Astronomical League and, uh, and, and of course, Dark Sky Scotland. Uh, Nights in the National Parks, I'm, I have to say, is a U.S.-based program. Uh, the others are pretty much international, but this is a U.S.-based program, and there's 24 parks around the U.S. that actually try to teach people who come uh, about dark skies, and they have a variety of programs to do so. Um, and they are very willing to partner with anybody on learning more about these events. I've already explained about the, uh, the citizen science programs we have, but just to mention again, there's one coming up on October 9th through the 23rd, namely the Great Worldwide Star Count that uses Cygnus in the Northern Hemisphere. And there's the uh, website, and of course Globe at Night next March, March 3rd through 16th, and How Many Stars, which is all year round, if you choose to do a program all year round, which is a great idea, using both the Little Dipper and Three Belt Stars in Orion. And there's two more that are particular just to Brazil, and to Australia that used Scorpio, and those are, ha have actually ended. I think they're only going to be this year. Um, the star hunting campaigns, well, I've mentioned this already. I don't know if, well, I, I could just mention that, remember, it's to record the night sky brightness by using a constellation and comparing that with, with seven maps or so of pro progressively fainter stars, and you submit your measurements online. Okay. There's one other uh, analog to all of this, uh, all of these citizen science programs that deal with um, star hunts. There's one for radio wavelengths called the Quiet Skies Program. And this is the National Radio Astronomy Observatory that's um, uh, trying to get people uh, around the world, particularly in the United States, but they'd be happy to do it around the world, uh, to send out kits. They have a few dozen kits that they've made to detect RFI. And the kids take their measurements and submit their data online as well, much like Globe at Night or How Many Stars. Now, all of these things are on uh, a, a um, handout that's with the poster that's outside. So if you don't necessarily want to write any of this down, you're more than welcome to take the poster and to um, just bring it home and look at the data online later on or the information online later on. Now, in terms of Dark Skies communities, we have done our best to promote these. We're not um, directly involved. We can't take credit for them. But uh, the ideas are so fantastic, we have to help promote them. And so many of you have heard about the Starlight Reserves today. That's one concept that's being supported, in addition to the Dark Skies communities that, um, that Kim spoke about. So um, I'm hoping that in the future, as many of you have, um, have uh, suggested, that the two, the twain shall meet, let's say. And, uh, and have a common goal, cause, which they do, but a common way of, of presenting it to everybody in the future. It's a very wonderful thing to do. Now, what I want to, to spend a couple minutes on now before closing is that I want to bring your attention to what's been done around the world by every country that I, can, I could possibly remember to put down on here, starting with Argentina and their efforts to um, do Globe at Night. And they have a, a Pierre Auger Observatory, and they've done a lot of um, uh, um, programs there in support of dark skies. But there's, uh, let's see, I'll pick out the ones from, from Europe. Uh, let's see, Belgium has done the Night of Darkness, 
And uh, Czech Republic has done Globe at Night as well as Finland. France has had their own Congress nationally and um, have, has uh, one of the first international dark sky reserves in Europe, the Pic, Pic du Midi Observatory in the Pyrenees. And Germany has done a great job in how many stars this many years, as well as their light meters now they're promoting. And uh, let's see, Germany has a book coming out uh, that has the IYA logo on it. Greece is doing a photo contest this week. We have Hungary, which has been incredible, as you've heard, with the, the two parks. And um, let's see, Macedonia with Globe at Night. Oh, I don't need to say anything about Northern Ireland. The, the, the session this afternoon with the Interactive Games just blew my socks off, as, as they say in the United States. And, and of course, the symposium this week. Uh, Poland has done a number of, uh, there's too many things to say th here about Poland. They have uh, everything from pamphlets to commemorative coins to joining uh, in, to, in Globe at Night. Um, Portugal as well has now a program with the GGTP in Globe at Night and um, the Night of the Stars in July. Let's see what else. Romania has done Globe at Night and Scotland has Dark Sky Scotland obviously. Let's see, Slovakia and Slovenia, maps of uh, light pollution in Slovakia. And uh, Slovenia, of course, um, they have been at the forefront in terms of their uh, promotion of laws and ordinances for dark skies. And Spain as well for Globe at Night. And Turkey. And the UK with their, their, dark, their dark sky parks reserve and reserves. And uh, let's see, well, the United States I'll, I'll leave out for the moment. And that's about it. There's been so much going on. It's been a phenomenal year, and a lot of it because of, the, of IYA being the catalyst. And if you need to learn anything more about the Dark Skies Awareness, um, Dark Skies Awareness programs, please feel free to call uh, to, to call on me after the after the session here, and I'd be very very happy to talk to you more. Okay, and thank you very much. Thanks very much, Connie. It was uh, interesting that you mentioned technology as well as uh, Darren Baskill in your uh, talk. So Darren is, is a bit, feeling a bit poorly at the moment, but he has been following the entire symposium live on uh, our video stream. So uh, hello, Darren. Uh, right, so uh, do you have any questions for uh, Constant? Uh, yep. Yeah, um, I was impressed to see the 24 national parks with their events. Um, kind of two questions. Do you know how many parks there are in the national parks there are in the States? And... Do you, can you tell if that's a, a, a big difference from last year or previous years? I think there's uh, probably in the 80s the number of parks that you know how many? Is that about right? Well, don't look at me. I'm sorry. They may have been spoken under the same. Yeah, 58 parks. And, the, and, and is the 24 parks, how many of them do you think might be doing it for the first time this year? Or? Um, pretty much a great deal. In terms of my patient education, it's only been going on maybe one or two years. But they really, really beefed it up, and they did a lot more of the training for the people in the parks this past year. Uh, any other questions? Uh, yes. Connie, a, a small addition to your uh, list of uh, countries that have contributed to a uh, dark sky uh, program. Uh, the Netherlands is having this year its fifth night of the night program. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, just a small addition. Thanks. Uh, maybe one final question, if there is one. Uh, no. Okay. Well, thank you. <laughs> Thanks very much.